Good morning. Good morning, class. Good morning, everyone. It's good for everyone to be here fellowshipping, isn't it? Merry Christmas, everyone. It's been a great time. If you're watching live stream or here, I am Pastor Denise Satrapi. Ron and I are senior leaders here at Christian Life Church. And whether you're viewing on live stream or at the church location, we want to welcome you. So we're going to encourage everyone to find their place. This morning is going to be a really special service. 
as we take some moments to celebrate Christmas. Yes. yes, the coming of our Lord and all that he's done to redeem us. So we have so much to celebrate today. Amen. This morning we're going to begin our service with a candlelight uh, praise and worship time. And so before we do, I want to encourage you on a few safety tips. Oh, yeah. Yes, to keep us nice and safe. We ask that all children remain with their parents during the lighting of the candles. I'm going to ask our ushers to come to the front so we can start preparing. And during that candlelight portion, I want you to understand, parents, please take responsibility for oversight and protection of your children. If they're eight and under, we're going to give them battery-operated ones. And for the regular candles, we've provided some reusable cups on the, your candles. You'll notice there's a reusable cup. Make sure that it's well below the flame so it doesn't catch on fire, but that's to catch the wax for you and help minimize the cleanup for us. So be sure to have that real windshield in place. Now keep the candle in an upright position and keep it out in front of you. But if you have somebody else that's sit sitting in front of you, make sure it's not too close to their hair. Alrighty, keep the flame away from your body or your clothing. Don't remove the protectors. And let's support our ushers as they are going to be watching over and giving some guidance just to make sure everyone stays nice and safe. If you're watching live stream, let me encourage you to get a candle and come and participate with us during as the as we worship together in candlelight now i'm going to ask the ushers to begin to prepare by uh, coming forward to light the candle and then i want to share a christmas poem while they are doing that it's called a christmas prayer and it was written by reverend lisa willett it says loving god on this christmas day we praise the newborn child our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We open up our eyes to see the mystery of faith and we claim the promise of Emmanuel, God with us. We remember our Savior. He was born in a manger and walked as a humble, suffering Savior. Lord, help us to share the love of God with everyone we encounter, to feed the hungry, to clothe the naked, to stand against injustice and oppression. We pray for the ending of war and rumors of war. We pray that there be peace on earth. We thank you for our families and friends and for the many blessings we've received. And we rejoice today with the best gifts, the gift of hope, the gift of peace, the gift of joy and the love of God in Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Yes, Father, we thank you that you are our joy. You are our peace. Why don't you stand as we get to worship God together? Amen. We're going to sing some carols this morning with a little bit of a new twist to them. And we're going to take some time just to lift up the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And I know that as we do... This morning, he's releasing his joy, his peace, his, his comfort. Whether you're in this house or you're watching us via live stream, just receive the gifts that God is releasing this morning as we lift him up. Amen. Father, thank you for who you are. Jesus, the light of the world, we celebrate you today. And we honor you as King of kings and Lord of lords forever. Release your joy, Father. Release your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Oh, we thank you, God, for who you are. We sing joy to the world. Joy to the world.
just take a moment and tell him, oh, how we love you. Step down into dark. 
Precious Father, we just come in this place to give you thanks and praise for your insightful, unending love that made a way for us through your Son. We thank you, precious Holy Spirit, for your presence in this place, reminding us, quickening us of the love of the Father and the love of the Son. And we pray that this day your name will be glorified in all that we say and all that we do, that you would ignite afresh and anew in the hearts of each person the awareness of the wonder of your great love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. I'm going to ask our ushers to um, blow. You can blow out your candles and ask our ushers to collect. <clears throat> be careful with the wax. You know, I'm so excited that you can be here today. Uh, what a best way to celebrate the season is to be with family and to be with friends. Amen. And so I'm so excited that you're going to be able to experience this special production being brought to you by our CLC worship team, being brought to you by the choir, with amazing support from the TV ministry and our drama team. It has been an amazing collaboration, which has taken months to put together. And I have to tell you, they didn't let COVID be a reason that we weren't going to get together and celebrate Christmas. So they creatively put together some ideas, and they've been hard at work. And I'm so excited about it. And so I want to share with you, if you're with us on live stream as a congregation, there's going to be moments where the screen will go dark. Please know we're just transitioning from one scene to the next and you haven't lost our signal. And whether you're present here in the sanctuary or live streaming, we want you to sit back, open up your heart, and allow this presentation to minister to your soul as they present to you Jesus past, present, and future. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our Christmas production, Jesus Past, Present, and Future. My name is Rena. I'm the music director here at Christian Life Church. We're so glad that you're joining us this morning, whether you're here in the sanctuary or you're with us via live stream. We love you and we are thankful for you. Earlier in this year, as I was praying and asking God, what do you want us to do for Christmas? I heard the Lord just say, I want you to release hope. I want you to remind the people that I am the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we're going to take a little journey this morning through song and through acting. We're going to look back at all the ways that God has been good in the past. We're going to take a second to look around even now and see how God is doing great things among us, even in the midst of what we're all facing. And then we're going to take some time to look into his word and see what he has to say about our future and how he releases blessing and hope over all of us. So sit back, relax, enjoy yourselves. And on behalf of the music ministry here at Christian Life Church, I just want to say we love you. God bless you. May his favor rest upon you and your homes for generations to come in this season and into the next. Merry Christmas. God bless you. Oh, bills, bills, more bills. How am I going to ever afford Christmas and get out all this debt? Oh, it's so stressful. Oh, it's my mechanic. Uh, hello? Yes, this is Scott. Yeah? What? Holy smoke, it's going to cost how much to fix my car? Well, it's my only family vehicle, so... I guess I really don't have a choice. Is it possible for you to put it on the card that you have on file and I'll figure it out later? Oh, okay, yeah, thanks a lot. <laughs> Merry Christmas. <laughs> oh my gosh. God, how am I gonna do this? I feel like all the pressure is on me to take care of my family and what's happening in the world right now. Oh, and well, all the COVID lockdowns and stuff like that and the business not doing well, how is this even gonna all work itself out? I have no idea. <laughs> oh. 
What is that? Is that my landline? I didn't even think that thing worked. Who would be calling me on that? And where did I put it? Oh, there it is. Oh, look at that. Whoa. Uh, hello? Whoa, is this like Scott? Uh, yes, and who is this? What's up? I'm the angel of Christmas past. Your past. Your way rad 80s past. You called? Well, that explains it. <laughs> what do you mean I called? You just called me. Oh, well, I like heard you pray and ask God how you're going to make ends meet and stuff, so I called you. I think I can help. It sounds like you have a lot in your mind, dude, and the Holy Spirit sent me to like remind you of all the ways that God has totally provided for you and protected you in the past to, you know, like encourage you. If he did it once, he'll totally do it again. He's the same like yesterday, today, and forever. I, I'm not understanding you. I'm definitely not following you either. Look, I see that you are going postal about how you're going to get out of this debt and make ends meet. Uh, yeah, look, you're the first person ever to go through something like this. Not. Don't you remember King David from the Bible? Uh, well, maybe. I mean, in youth group, but that was a long time ago. Well, if you can just chill out from your brain freeze for like a second, you might remember that David faced a lot of totally gnarly stuff in his life. He had to fight lions and bears and totally skeezy dudes on the battlefield. And when he would feel like, ugh, this situation totally barfs me out... He would take time to remember. He would like take time to go back in his thinking and remind himself about all the times that God way protected him in the past. Encourage himself in the moment. I think you should try that, dude. You want to take a walk with me down memory lane? Uh, okay. Do I have a choice? <laughs> dude. Do you remember the time when you were a kid and you fell off your monkey bars and you broke your arm? Ugh, gag me with a spoon. Uh, how do you even know about that? Duh. The Holy Spirit was like there with you. Uh, are you sure about that? Because I did break my arm. And if he was there with me, he should have prevented me from breaking it in the first place. He was there. And he way protected you. Just not in the way you would expect. Remember how scared you were and how your so-called friends just stood there and did nothing while you bawled your eyes out? But then some of the Christian kids in school came over and they prayed for you and how you felt like totally chill while you waited to be taken to the hospital. Oh yeah, I totally remember that. Mm-hmm, that was a way God. And remember that it was that encounter that made you begin to believe in God and that when you decided to give your heart to him, the joy that you felt when you did, mm. remember how it didn't matter how skeezy things seemed even when your parents divorced a few months later and you guys were forced to leave your rad house and move into that tiny apartment, dude. Even with all that gnarly stuff that went down, nothing took your joy away. I do remember that now. Dude, God wants to restore that joy in you. He wants you to go back and remember the joy of your salvation and that totally chill peace that comes with serving him. I'm telling you, dude, childlike faith is what you need to believe. The joy and peace that comes from believing is going to give you what you need when you're facing the problems of today. Uh, hello? Uh, hello? I can't hear you. Can you hear me now?
Hello? Hello? Is anyone there? I guess we got disconnected. <laughs> Did that really just happen? Anyway, well, I could use a distraction. I wonder what's happening on social media these days. Hmm. <laughs> well, that's cute. Christmas puppies. <laughs> what? No. That's ridiculous. They did not write that. What? That's... You know what? Facebook was a bad idea. <sighs> Maybe something better on the news. Hmm. Let's see. Virus shuts down local business. Oh, that's great. Political unrest? Protesters burn down local library? What? Murder hornets? All right, that's it. I'm done. God, what's this world coming to? I don't even think there's any hope left. Oh my gosh, I have a parent-teacher Zoom meeting right now. Oh, I completely forgot. Oh, jeebus. Oh. All right, let's see if I can connect in with her here. Hmm, I'm so zoomed out. Wait a minute, are you, are you the angel I just talk, spoke with? Can you hear me? It's muted. You just need to click the button in the bottom left. I didn't think I'd hear from you again. Uh, I'm not sure what you mean. Uh, we just got disconnected? I don't know what you're talking about. We just talked on my landline. <sighs> uh, no, no, we didn't. You took me about back to the past with the goodness of God? Oh, yeah, no, that wasn't me. That was the angel of Christmas past. People mix us up all the time. I'm the angel of Christmas present. And yeah, um, don't you can save your snarky remarks about my name. Uh, this is getting weird. Yeah, I think it's weird too. Well, listen, bro, you reached out to me. I'm just here because you're obviously getting worked up about the state of the world and the Holy Spirit sent me to encourage you, blah, 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 so you can refocus. Refocus? I'm very focused. <laughs> True story, bro, but just on all the wrong things. Uh, like what? The news? A uh, fake book? You might as well be drinking toilet water. I'm just trying to educate myself on what's happening in the world right now. How's that working out for you? Well, what do you suggest I do? Well, maybe if you're needing wisdom and encouragement in your life, and it sounds like you do, you might consider uh, looking up. Not literally. No. Listen. All the things that you're looking to are just going to provide you with information. What you need is revelation. Revelation? What do you mean? You need some good news. And that only comes from God. And if you want to thrive and not just survive through the current state of affairs, you have to get into God's word and look at things from his perspective to see that he really is the same yesterday, today, and forever. I feel like we've had this conversation. Okay, what do you suggest? Well, even in the midst of everything that seems terrible and all the things that are happening in the world right now, you need to take a second to see how God is moving and hunt for the good. Well, for example? Well, for one, the racial tension that's happened has forced people to start talking and facing the issues that were long overdue. People are beginning to build bridges instead of burn them. And that's pretty good. Yeah, that is good news. And even with COVID lockdowns, people are still finding ways to come together. It's forced humanity to look for and find ways to stay connected, especially within the church. The gospel, <clears throat> the good news, <clears throat> is reaching more people now over the internet than ever before. People are actually getting saved at a faster rate. Did you know that? Wow, I had no idea. Mm. And if you need more convincing, I can make it more personal. Even though you've had to switch up how you do business, you've still had a steady flow of clients and more coming in. Am I right? Yeah, it's been a challenge, and we had to recover for closing for a few weeks, but God didn't close our doors permanently like others did. Exactly. And you've learned to be flexible. And because of it, you've actually had more time with your family at home to make some great memories and build relationships. Yeah, that's stuff that really matters. I think you're finally getting it. People, people and relationships, Scott, are what, was, what is most important to God. Not news feeds and how many likes someone can get on social media. Mm. 
Can you now see that God has been moving and doing some pretty amazing things all along? I'm starting to. Good. Okay, I guess that call's over. <laughs> there is a truth older than the ages there is a promise of things yet to come there is one born for our salvation jesus there is a light that overwhelms the darkness there is Boy, those angels sure have a weird way of communicating. But I guess weird is the new normal for 2020. Boy, when I was setting my yearly goals last January, I, if someone had told me that I would have spent over half a year in quarantine, having to wear a mask to go outside, and fighting over with people over hand sanitizer, Lysol wipes, and toilet paper, I would have totally thought they were crazy. 
Boy, I sure wouldn't imagine that our kids would have to have distant learns from home. Oh, gosh, 2020. Hmm. But I guess it hasn't all been bad. I mean, I've been able to spend quality time with my family, and we've been really getting closer together. Oh, that's Ella's teacher. Oh, she just texted me. She's probably wondering why I missed that Zoom call. <laughs> Not sure how I'm going to explain that one to her. Hmm. Please forgive me, but I have to reschedule our parent-teacher Zoom call. Walmart just got a shipment of toilet paper. Well, <laughs> you understand. Let's connect next week. <laughs> well, guess I'm going to Walmart. Whoa, where did you come from? Oh, Angel of Christmas Future? How did you guess? Uh, just a hunch, but uh, why the sunglasses? Because your future's so bright. I have to wear shades? Exactly. Oh my gosh, this is getting so corny. I didn't write the script. Well, anyway, why are you really here? I mean, just to tell me the future's bright, that we're all in this together. Good vibes for the future, man. Well, I could throw out some silly cliches at you to try to make you feel better about the future. But the truth is, those are just momentary band-aids, and they don't really help in the long term. And since God is the only one who really knows everything that your future holds, what you need is not trendy catchphrases that look good on a mug. What you need is the truth of God's word. So you have something solid to stand on when it feels like the foundations underneath you are being shaken. Okay, okay, I'm listening. I can't tell you exactly how it's gonna play out for you, for your family, for your business, but I can tell you that what God's word says about you is the truth. But it's up to you to apply it. You have a decision to make, Scott. Live in fear for the future or have faith that nothing is impossible with God. Well, I do like my chances better with God than without him. Well, that's a perfect place to start. Do you have a Bible? Yeah, I got one in junior high, but it's pretty old. It's somewhere around here. Uh, oh, uh, here. Huh, interesting. This looks brand new, like it's never been opened. Well... <laughs> All right, that doesn't matter. What matters is that you're ready to open it now. Let me show you a few important scriptures that you can go to for encouragement. You can read them when you're feeling scared, or you can declare them out loud as a blessing over your life, over your family, over your future. When you're feeling like you're under attack, declaring the Word of God out loud can shift the atmosphere around you. And as you hear yourself speaking out the truth, it can totally change your demeanor too. Okay, so well, actually, how does this work? Well, when you speak the word, it helps to build your faith. It takes your focus off your problems and puts the focus on God. When we make God bigger, everything else gets smaller. And he promises in Isaiah 26 that he keeps those in perfect peace whose minds are focused and stayed on him because they trust in him. Wow, that sounds really good. How did you know that was in there? because I actually read this. All right, are you ready to look at some scriptures? Sure. Because I want to show you some scriptures and have you say them out loud. Are you okay with that? Okay. All right, well, let's start with one of my personal favorites in Jeremiah 29, 11. Hmm. For I know the thoughts that I think towards you, says the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. Oh, wow, it says it right here. He wants to give me a hopeful future. You didn't know that was in there, did you? No. Well, now try Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose. See, God really is going to work things out for your good. Let's look up some of the Old Testament scriptures as well. Um, how about trying Isaiah 54, 13? All your children shall be taught by the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. And now try Deuteronomy 7, 9. 
Therefore know that the Lord your God, He is God, the faithful God who keeps covenant and mercy for a thousand generations with those who love Him and keep His commandments. Gosh, God really does want a hopeful future full of peace, even for our children. Wow, just knowing that, that actually takes the weight off my shoulders. God is so good, isn't he? Just imagine how much you love your children, and God loves them so much more. Well, let's head back to the New Testament to one of my favorite scriptures. This is a good one, Philippians 4, 6. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God, and that the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Scott, God doesn't promise to tell you the future when you pray. He doesn't even promise to work things out exactly the way you expect them to when you pray. But when you pray, when you actively give your cares over to Him and trust in Him, He promises something even better than anything the world could ever give you, and that's His peace. When you have the peace of God that transcends all your understanding, you can rest in the middle of a storm and not worry that the boat you're in is gonna fall apart. Wow, I totally get it. Well, I think my work is done here. Don't forget to open this. Life is so crazy, and there's so much competing for our attention, and so much noise telling us to be fearful. That's why it's so important to always look back and remember the goodness of God, and to do our best to look at the current situations through His eyes, through the eyes of faith that believe the best so that we can stay hopeful for the future. Shine upon you and be gracious.
upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children and their children may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening when you're coming and you're going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you he is for you he is for you
God. You know, the, the whole theme about the past, the present, and the future really is a cycle of eternity. Just past, present, and future happening over and over again in every one of our lives. And one of the things that I thought of when I saw that is about God's generosity. Mm -hmm. That God so loved us, he gave his son, he gave his son, Jesus, to forgive us of all of our past sins. Aren't you glad you've been forgiven of your sins? Maybe not everybody here has, but what a, a generosity forgiveness is. You know, some people give financially, but they're not very generous when it comes to forgiveness. But God, he broke the bank. He gave the most precious thing he had, and that's his only begotten son, Jesus Christ, who came to do something about your past and my past sins. Dying on a cross, paying the penalty we all owed yes. so that we could receive the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ. And Jesus, he comes into our life in the present. I think that's why it's a gift. It's a present for the present. And he comes into our life to give us a brand new life with God. And he comes in and he operates through grace, which is God's unmerited favor. He, grace is not a pass on sin so that you can just keep sinning. Grace is a gift of God's ability to live right. And God wants to help you live right. He's not sitting in heaven trying to make judgment over you. He came to earth to give you the power to live for him and serve him. And then the Bible tells us he's coming back again in the future. We don't know when that's going to be, but I got a hint a little clue about what's happening in the world. It isn't going to be long. Jesus is coming back. Will you be ready when he comes back? Will you be ready for that cycle to repeat, to be with God forever in heaven? So important if we see this presentation to, rem to, to remember what Christmas is all about. God gave a gift. Have you opened it yet? Well, how do I open it? You have to open your heart. And the Bible says that if you'll open your heart, he'll come in. And he'll be a part of your life. If you're here and you'd be honest, you say, Pastor, I, I really need to open my heart to the Lord. And I want God to come into my life and, and help me like we saw in this video. If that's you and you say, Pastor, pray for me. I need God to forgive me of my sins. And I need to make things right with him. If that, as we bow our heads, if that's you, would you just slip up a hand? And it, if you're watching, God sees those hands. If, if you're watching from home on live stream, would you just pray this prayer with us? Can you repeat this prayer with me, church? Heavenly Father, thank you for the gift of Jesus Christ who paid for my sins so I could be right with you. I owed a debt I could never pay. And Jesus paid that debt for me. Come into my life, Jesus. I receive you as a gift. I can't earn heaven. I can only receive a gift that brings me there. So come into my life, Jesus. And Lord, help me to live for you. Help me to trust you with my present and with my future so that I can rest in your care. In Jesus' mighty name. And everybody said, Amen. Thank God for that. You know, there's so many provisions that we have as a result of what Christ did upon that cross, satisfying the claim of death, satisfying the debt of our sin. And, you know, that's the greatest blessing that you and I could ever receive. That's the blessing of his grace in our life. But it makes me think at Christmas, you know, so many of us, we give gifts one to another. And, you know, trying to communicate and demonstrate our love. Yet at times, we don't give the most important gift that we could extend to one another. That's the gift of forgiveness. And so let me just encourage you this year. I think it's wonderful when we can give natural gifts. But the most powerful gift that you could ever give to a loved one, to a family member, maybe even to an enemy 
is the gift of forgiveness this Christmas. So I just want to encourage you this year. Take some time to extend forgiveness. Don't let, you know, all the smiles that we can do and still hide all of the stuff on the inside and have issues between us and family members and friends. So let me just encourage you, write some meaningful notes. Make a meaningful call. If that person is no longer here on this earth, surrender them to God and give a blessing because in blessing, you are blessed. Now, can I ask you to stand to your feet? We'd like to pray a blessing over your life. We'd like to pray that the fullness and the richness of what God has for you is made available. So now I want you to, if you're, if you're comfortable, lift your hands up to the Lord, and I want you to receive from him this day. Heavenly Father, I just thank you that we can come before you and lay claim to the promises that you have granted us because of what Jesus has done. And so I release the blessing of forgiveness, Father God, to each of your people, that they may know the freedom from guilt, the freedom from shame. Lord God, that you would bless those, because you said that they that hope in you are never put to shame. So we speak your blessing of freedom and liberty. Father God, we release the blessing of their destiny. Father, the things that you have planned for them, the good things, the 2021 will be a year of releasing destinies into the lives of your people. We thank you for the blessing of wisdom for those that have been crying out, God, I need some answers. And I thank you for releasing your answers. I thank you for your healing power that can not only touch our bodies, but touch our mind and touch our soul. And so we release the blessing of God that brings healing and reconciliation to each and every person. We release the power of your angels to go before them, to go behind them, to guard their going out and their coming in. Lord, that you would bless the work of their hands, bless the relationships in their midst. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.